Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm a Malaysian author and welcome back. Today I will be telling you a popular story from Indonesia, from Java, called Timon Mas. In Malay, Timon means cucumber and Mas or Amas, which happens to be my mom's name, means gold. So this is a story about a girl who was called Timon Mas. She was named after a golden cucumber. Why? If you want to know, sit back, relax, chill while I tell you the story of Timon Mas. Once upon a time, there was a woman called Ambo Srini. She lived near the edge of the jungle in a little house where she had a vegetable plot. She grew vegetables there and sold it at the market. And for a long time, she was happy with her life. However, as time passed by, she grew quite lonely and she began to long for a child. She had heard that in the forest, there lived a raksaksa, or a giant, an ogre, called Buto Ijo. She heard that he could grant wishes. So being desperate, she went into the forest to look for him. She called out to Buto Ijo, and he appeared. He was this horrible creature, a huge giant with green skin. He came up to her. She was so frightened. But she was so desperate for her wish. So she said to him, please, can you help me? I really want a baby. I want a child to take care of. And Buto Ijo looked at her and he said, I can help you, but what will you give me in return? She said, I have nothing to give you. Buto Ijo said, I will help you get a baby. But when the baby turns 17, on her 17th birthday, I will come to your house and I will take your baby back. Ambo Srini was scared. She was frightened. She was scared to make a decision. But finally, she thought that she couldn't go on with life any longer. She really wanted a child and she would deal with the repercussions later. She would try and figure out a way to keep her child. So she agreed to this unfavorable term. Buto Ijo, the giant, the ogre, gave her a tiny seed, a golden seed. He said to her, plant this seed, take care of it, and then your wish will come true. Ambo Srini gently took the seed. She ran home. She put the seed in her most fertile soil. She watered it and she watched it. The seed finally grew into a cucumber plant and she waited. One morning, she came out to look at her cucumber plant and she saw that there was a fruit there, a golden, beautiful fruit. She held out her hands like that and the fruit sort of plopped into her hands. It opened up and inside, nestled inside, was a beautiful baby girl. Ambot Srini fell in love with the child and she named this child Timon Mas after the golden cucumber. Of course, Ambot Srini loved the child, she nurtured the child, although she knew that one day she would have to return the child to the ogre. She didn't want to think about it. That was way off into the future. She was just going to enjoy her time with her baby now. But as parents know, children grow up and they grow up quickly. And soon Timon Mas grew into a beautiful, smart, lovely young lady. And on the eve of her 17th birthday, Ambo Srini broke down. She didn't know what to do. She hadn't figured out how to save Timon Mas. So she told Timon Mas her problem. All they could do was gather up weapons, things that might help Timon Mas escape from the ogre. Now they were poor, so they didn't have like real weapons. All they had was some cucumber seeds, some needles, some, some salt, and a clump of earth. They weren't sure whether these things were enough to stop the ogre, but they left it in the hands of God. So they put these four items in a pouch and they waited. The next day, they could hear the ogre coming down <laughs> towards the house. And Ambo Srini said to Timon Mas, quick, you must run away as fast as you can. And that's what Timon Mas did. The ogre knocked on the door. He said, I'm here for Timon Mas. You promised that you would give her up on her 17th birthday, so you must give her to me now. Umbo opened the door. He looked around and he saw that she wasn't there. Where is she? He was so angry. He looked around and he saw that the back door was open, so he guessed that she had run away. You've broken your promise, but I'm going to get Timon Mas. So he ran out the back door. Timon Mas was fleeing away from the giant 
and he soon caught up with her. She threw her first pouch, which was the cucumber seeds. As soon as the seeds hit the earth in front of the giant, it grew into a huge cucumber patch and the giant thought, oh, cucumbers, food. And he was momentarily distracted by the tasty snack. But when he finished eating all the cucumber, he remembered, oh, I'm supposed to be after Timur Mas. So he got up and he ran after Timur Mas once again. He caught up with her and this time she threw her pouch of needles. The needles hit the ground and it grew into this huge, thick bamboo forest trapping the ogre inside. The ogre was being pierced by all the bamboo spears, but he was strong, he was big, he crashed out of the forest and he ran after Timon Mas. And as soon as he caught up with her, she threw the third pouch, which was the pouch of salt. As soon as the salt hit the ogre, it turned into a huge swirling mass of seawater. It turned into the sea and it swept the ogre away. It threatened to drown him, but the ogre was a strong swimmer and he managed to swim out of the water. By this time, he had had enough. He was going to get Timon Mas, but Timon Mas was determined to get away. When he caught up with her, she threw the last pouch, which was the pouch of soil. As soon as the soil hit the ground in front of the ogre, it turned into a huge mound of earth and it covered the ogre up. It brought the ogre down to the bottom of the earth underground where he was trapped and where he died. Timon Mas couldn't believe it. They had defeated the ogre with these four tiny things. She was so happy. She ran home. She embraced her mother. She told her mother what had happened. And together, Timon Mas and her mother lived happily ever after. The end. This story is an example of a successful adaptation of a fairy tale, of a Nusantara fairy tale, because it is so popular in Indonesia. You can see it there in books, in comics, in certain dramas. If you look it up on the internet, you can see short stories of Timon Mas and also short animated films or little sort of cartoons. I put a link down below to a really good short animated uh, Timon Mas film by Indonesian company called Kastari Animation. Have a look. I think this is the most common version of Timon Mas, the most popular version of Timon Mas, where the giant is uh, this big green monster. Uh, Ijo or hijau means green, so that's why he's green. A bit like the jolly green giant, I suppose, but not jolly at all. So this is one version of Timon Mas. Even though this fairy tale is very popular in Indonesia, I hadn't heard of it and I only came across it quite recently when I found um, Evie Shelvia's book, Timon Mas. This book is published by Oyes Books and it's in Malay. I think you can still get it at the Oyes Book Bookstore in Silverfish. I'll put a link down below. But this book is fantastic. Evie was inspired by different cultural elements, especially in Indonesia and Malaysia. She portrayed the ogre not as this green giant, but as a character in a Balinese a traditional performance called Topeng Keras and Jau Manis. She also uses beautiful bate illustrations in the stories. Have a look. Um, she uses bate motives and bate colors. Uh, and she's been, she was also inspired by Wayang Gole and Kuda Kipang. Kuda Kipang is a traditional Malay dance as well, which is popular in the state of Johor, but I suppose they have it in Indonesia as well. I wouldn't be surprised. So through the medium of art and local culture, Evie has given a new spin to this old tale. She has attracted a new audience and this is what I'm talking about when I say that these fairy tales can move and they can adapt and change. By changing these fairy tales, by uh, making it relevant to our lives today or to a particular segment of society, these tales can breathe again. Another example of the way in which this fairy tale has been adapted is something that I wrote. Um, in an anthology called Little Basket, New Malaysian Writing 2018. And this is published by Fixie Novo. This is a great book. Go get it. I think it's still available on the Fixie website and um, at, in Shopee. So 
In my adaptation, I wrote a short story called A Pot of Seeds for Ghostmen. And instead of portraying the ogre as this monster, as a supernatural monster, I turned him into something much more sinister, a man, a man who traffics in children. Once again, this is a way that we can use traditional fairy tales, folklore, to have a sort of commentary on the issues that we have today on our current lives. An example of a traditional story that was in danger of being lost is Hikayat Raja Babi. I've uh, done an episode on Hikayat Raja Babi or the Malay tale of the Pig King. I'll put a link down below if you want to have a look. This fantastic story was stuck in the British Library for years in a form that wasn't very accessible, that wasn't very available for people to read. And it stayed there until Malaysian publisher Fixie decided to romanize this book and turn it into Hikayat Raja Babi. It's a book in all Malay, I'll put a link down below if you're interested. You can, I think you can download it for free on Google Play. So for a while, Hikayat Raja Babi lived on, but then it languished again. I mean, a few people read it, but no one really took up our little pig king and turned him into something else, into a comic, a video game, a musical, or even another book. Uh, so in 2020, last year, uh, the publisher decided to turn Hikayat Rajababi into a children's illustrated book, my book, The Malay Tale of the Pig King, which was also illustrated by Evie Shelvia, by the way. So because of this, I hope that our Pig King has, um, has, has come back to life somewhat, and I hope that someone else will take this Pig King and bring him to a new audience. I'll put a link to the Malay Tale of the Pig King book trailer above and below, so you can have a look and enjoy Evie Shelvia's beautiful illustrations. So finally, what is this story about? To me, the first thing that struck me was uh, Ambut Srini's extreme longing and her desire for a child, this problem of childlessness. I think it props up in a lot of fairy tales. Parents will do anything. They are willing to sacrifice anything to have children. Umbo Srini is so desperate for a child that she is willing to go into the jungle, into the forest to find this ogre and to ask him to grant her a wish. And even though the terms he gives are unfavorable, in fact, detrimental, she agrees with it because nothing trumps her need for a child. And that, I think, is a theme, a motive that props up in a lot of other fairy tales. Following on from this, my second point, uh, it might not be a popular opinion, but I kind of feel sorry for the ogre, you know? He he was clear, he was upfront with her. He told her, you know, I will grant your wish, but in return, you have to do this. You have to return your daughter to me when she turns 17. It's a clear term. I don't know if this is the lawyer in me talking or what. It's a clear expressed term. In fact, it is the only term. You know, this is the only term in the contract. She has one thing to do. So it seems a bit unfair that Mbo was able to breach this term. Of course, you can argue that it was an unreasonable term. Uh, probably if such a term existed today, it would be struck out by the courts. You can also argue that she didn't really break her promise. She allowed the ogre to come into the house to take the girl, but it was Timun Mas who had run away. It's arguable. Finally, another theme which crops up in this story is the use of nature, of the environment. In order to escape from the ogre, Timon Mas uses four items, and that was the cucumber seeds, the needles, which presumably are made out of metal and come from the ground, and therefore from it's a natural resource, uh, the salt and the clump of earth. She uses items that we find in nature in order to make her escape. Interestingly, in other versions, she also uses this uh, thing called tarasi or shrimp paste, 
what we in Malaysia would call belacan because hey, I can't think of a better kind of weapon than belacan, right? So she uses these items to escape from the ogre. She throws these items at the ogre and it is as if she is manipulating the environment to help her, to protect her from this monster. I find this quite interesting and I would love to discover other uh, Nusantara fairy tales which uses this motive. I haven't found anything yet, but if you know any fairy tales, let me know. This act of throwing various items at a pursuing monster kind of reminds me of an old story called Petrocinella. Petrocinella is uh, the precursor to the Rapunzel story, you know, the one about the maiden with the long hair in the tower and the prince climbs up and saves her, blah, blah, blah. You know the story, right? So Petrocinella uh, came before Rapunzel. It was written or it was collected by a fairy tale collector called Giambattista Basile in his collection, the Pentemmeroni, or the Tale of Tales, which was written in 1634. So it came before the Grimm's version of Rapunzel, which was written in 1812. I love the story of Petrocinella. Unlike Rapunzel, she is not this passive girl that just allows things to happen to her. She has guts, she is forward planning, she actively plans her escape from the, in this, in this story, it's an ogress, not a witch. Like Timon Mas, Petrocinella has three items in which to throw at the ogress. And these items are three magic gall nuts, which I suppose are nuts, I'm not sure. Um, so she throws at the ogress in order to make her escape. And each time she throws the gall nut at the ogress, it turns into something else. I'd love to tell you the story of Petrocinella now but i don't think i have time in this particular video if you want me to do another video comparing and contrasting the story of petrocinella with timon mas let me know in the comments below um, i'm not sure whether the two tales are directly compatible with each other but we can just do one and and see how it goes see whether there's a link between the two let me know in the comments below so what do you think of the story of timon mas it's fantastic isn't it i'd love to hear your thoughts so please do leave a comment below if you like this video and the work that i'm doing now please consider liking and subscribing to my channel please support me in my mission to get these stories out next week i will be telling you a special iban story from sarawak called danjai and the weird tiger's sister with a title like that you have to join me. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.